One, two, three, four. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and ge- ge- gentlemen. That's right, the big dick is here. Get ready. May we start? Tasty Tuesdays. We back in the building. We got the Rockwell Podcast collaboration. Um, I got Gover with me. I got Jeeves with me. What's going on? Gover, why don't you introduce yourself to the people one time? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like this is such an amazing honor to be here at Dash Studio. Shout out, shout out to bro Zebra. We out here posted. You feel me, Zebra? man? It's such a wonderful feeling on Hollywood Boulevard. My name is Gover Edward McConaughey, a.k.a. Southeast Airlines, straight out of Malawi, Africa. You know, we coming at you with the heat, straight big heat. Time. Big dripping, big wavy, man. It's just an honor and a pleasure. Shout out Dash Studios Radio. We up in this here, partner. Jeez, what's up? What's going on, guys? Everyone knows me. This is Tazy Tuesdays, and I'm good to be back. We're here in sunny L.A., Hollywood, California, and I'm just excited to share this space with you guys. Before we get, and I'm Ro Rockwell, by the way. It's Rockwell Podcast, Ro Rockwell. Y'all do your Googles whenever you want to do it. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to Dash Radio. I want to give a shout-out to Zebra. I want to give a shout-out to Tasty Tuesdays, baby. Yeah. Go, bro. How was your weekend, bro? But I'm not going to lie to you. This was such an eventful weekend. Was it? Like, full of twists Was it and easily turns. the best day ever? It was, I mean, Friday was easily the best because I was rolling dice 7, 8, 9 all night. <laughs> all right. But by the time it hit Sunday, you already know. Yeah. You know, I had to go discover a few things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you had to go discover real quick? Let the people know one time. <laughs> You know, song, what I'm you know what I'm saying? They had me out there. Uh, I was there with uh, my peoples out there in uh, in Brentwood at this this nice restaurant called Balter. It's over there on San, uh, I think San Vicente. Mm-hmm. Wonderful, five stars. Nice, nice. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so I was. We were invited to a little birthday little get together. So I go to the birthday little get together, mm-hmm. and it's um, a Muslim family. So they're like, you know. We're going to be respectful because they just came out of Ramadan. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it was a mom and her two sons, and their sons were a little bit older. You feel me? So as soon as I pop up in there, you know, I was trying to come on my my Zen master. <laughs> you feel me? As soon as I go up in there, the mama was ready to go. You know what I'm saying? She forgot. Oh, shit. Mama. You know what I'm Who's saying? Who's mama? Huh? <laughs> Somebody mama was up in there trying to do the do on a Sunday. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. Feel and it was a whole episode, but, you know, I kept my cool. Yeah, you, you gotta, you gotta, you know, keep that on the low. Yeah. With, with her at least, you know. I mean, I try to, you know, as long as nobody finds out. Yeah. yeah. She came out of Ramadan hungry as fuck. She did. Yes. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Shout out to Kyrie Irving. <laughs> like that should be happening, bro. That shit happens. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, you know what I'm saying? So you know, we had to feed her a little bit. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What about you, G's? How was your weekend? It was chill, honestly. We just hit up a couple of parties with my friends. Um, they play a couple, you know, events. I have a lot of DJ friends, so Word. they played a couple. of events uh, in downtown um but yeah i just i kept it kind of a little low-key with my girl said hi to a couple of people nice and had a nice dinner and had a wholesome had a wholesome weekend i couldn't get as crazy yeah, yeah. but you know that's la life for yeah. you you know what I, I meditated for the whole weekend Oh yeah, yeah. Dude, remember no, you doing straight that. up. I remember walking in on you and you had your yeah, whole thing going. Yeah, bro. I'll be this, meditating, yeah. bro. For sure. You know, sometimes you got to get aligned with the universe and let the stars, mm. you know, guide you to where you need to be. Chakras, chakras. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Got to align those. Yeah, sure. y'all get a little taste of feel of what we about to do on this podcast, this show. Sure. You know what mm. I'm saying? Yeah. You want to h- get into the topics real quick? Yeah, we yeah. might as well, man. It's a All great right. day. Let me let me holler at you, G's, real quick, because Tyler that? the Creator dropped that. Ill ass deluxe album, right? Mm-hmm. What was it seven more tracks than he usually? It was uh, deluxe, the deluxe of "Call Me If You Get Lost," and it was seven tracks that he added. One of them is a is a small like interlude. Um, but again, this man put in work. Yes, honestly, since I think even Flower Boy started, and it's funny because we're gonna talk about it later. The the documentary on Hulu goes into it. Um, ever since Flower Boy, this man has just been. You can tell he's hungry. He goes for it. His pen has gotten nothing but better throughout the years from the little boy we met at Yonkers. Now he's he's this full-grown man just talking about everything, letting emotional, um, letting his emotions carry him, but not in such a way that's like questionable. It's just like, oh, this man is growing up, and it's so nice to see him flourish as an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he had he technically six songs, all bangers, all amazing. He even sampled uh, a Kanye West sample. 
Mm-hmm. Which one was heaven, that one? Because heaven, heaven, heaven to me. Oh shit! I didn't even realize you know, that. That's a that's a Connie. Uh, it's a Connie sample. I can't think of the song right now. If I could find it, I will let you guys know. But it let is, me ask you this real quick though. You think? Let me throw this out there. Is Tyler the Creator the best rapper alive at this point? I know they gave it to Twenty One. We love Twenty One, but as a rapper, and when I say pound for pound, bar for bar. I think Tyler rapping, rapping. What do you think? Like, I for real think he be rapping, he, rapping. That's, and that's what the, the documentary goes into. Because um, when he started, everyone didn't really take him serious. Because he was like, you know, just saying off shit. Right, just trying right. to, just wilding out like with, with our future. Yeah. yeah. But honestly, his pen is crazy. Right. Um, He had, he had the, how he rolled out this deluxe is he did, he released a video for Dogtooth. Amazing song. Uh, has a little bit of ASAP Rocky vocals in there, and then he also then he released "Sorry Not Sorry," which I think to me is one of his mo- his most personal mm-hmm. songs because he's basically just like writing a letter to um to his friends, family, and everything. he talks about his he talks about his his le- his downs, his ups. Mm-hmm. The video itself depicts him and his uh, all his other eras. So he has. Wolfgang, he has all uh, oh, yeah, future. Yeah, he There's had mm-hmm. Flower Boy, but in e- the whole, as you're watching the video, I recommend watching it because it's just so beautifully shot. Saw it, yeah. yeah, he's just taking out all these egos that he built, and mm-hmm. again, it's just to show that he's he's just hungry. Honestly, his pen is just gets crazy, gets crazy. I think his pen is the best in the game right now. So when I say best rapper alive. I think Dirk up there, there's a lot of rappers who could be put in this conversation. I'm putting him in that conversation because of the pen, because we know it's his pen. And again, I'm not hating on nobody who raps and it's not their pen. I know you're a musician. I know you're a performer. But we know when Tyler rapping that it's his pen, right? Mm. It's so Mm. personal. And we're accustomed to his bars. I remember when he dropped Yonkers when it first came out. I was like, shit, this is new. Even then, when he was rapping the wild shit, like, yeah. it was lyrical, you know? It was bars. I feel like he is probably, like, uh, as far as most rapping, the person who says, like, the most craziest shit, it's been him. And then before that was Eminem. Eminem yeah. Ever since, it hasn't been none. But it's to say is the best rapper, like, alive, nobody has surpassed Drake since. Yeah, when I say that, it's mainly what I'm trying to say, new rappers. Because best. Because I remember when Wayne said it originally, and that's when it's all originated from, right? When Wayne was like, I'm the best rapper alive since the best rapper retired. And at, even at that point, Hove, Jay-Z would have had it, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's mainly, I think that title goes, it's like a, the newcomers. Not newcomers, the younger generation. Well, but at that time, Jay, Jay was retiring. Though. Like He was basically mm-hmm. like, all right. And then Wayne, ran that's with true. Drake that's true. Is, is right down the street. He, he present as ever. No, that's a good fact. About, you know what we I'm love saying? Drake. Once he steps like in the back and then like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Whoever yeah. we're gonna throw on. That's a hundred. Like I I I respect that because I really do fuck with Drake. And I would say he's the best, like I would say Wayne is the best rapper alive still, but mm-hmm. Wayne's let, penis goes crazy. Yeah, Wayne is Wayne's crazy. Wayne's crazy. And it's still like, bro, he's hit a second win because did, the last mm-hmm. three or four years it's just been nothing but heat. Yeah. Like what? I think he heard the talk. He just did a he just did a, a remix. I forgot which song. Um I'll find the song and I'll let you guys yeah. know which one it is. But even then I'm like, damn, Lil Wayne's still rapping like this? For real. Crazy. He's still rapping like this? He had just dropped a single, I think it was like last month, called uh, Can't Nobody. It was oh, yeah. DMX that sample. With so, Swiss Beats. DMX, come Swiss Beats produced that. Hey, I got it on for you. We know RP With DMX. the VVS is right come there. On, I see you. With me. Shining. It's done. But um, yeah, I heard that one and I thought that was fire too. Yeah. And I think you're right. He did have a reawakening because he heard the chat and the rumors and shit. I don't know if he got sober. I don't even give a fuck well, if he got sober. I think it was probably the, what, what was going on behind the scenes with, you know The label. Saying? And the him and Bird, man. I yeah. think them probably records. Because, man, it's never... Nobody wins when the family feuds. Yeah. Oh, I feel like no, no. Once, once things got, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ironed out, I feel like he probably was So, when, when I'm talking about Tyler being the best... Because they just recently... I saw... I don't know if it was Complex. I don't know who it was. And again, 21, we fuck with you. I think oh, 21 yeah, is yeah. up there. Like, oh, what, bro? Yeah. What? I'm, say, I'm just saying Tyler got to be in that conversation. Yeah, in that conversation. And of the... It's not even the new generation. It's kind of like the middle generation. The, Does it make sense? The thing about Tyler that I think I can appreciate is that now that hip hop has gone this direction, Tyler definitely still embodies um, that underground old school, like mm-hmm. Alchemist sound, Jay Dilla sound. He still finds these samples and these. That's a great point. Yeah, and he puts Sampling them in, and he has crazy. he has those he has the same flow as these. Yeah. MF Doom was one of his be- his, oh, his favorite yeah. artists, yeah. RIP. Yeah. But yeah, still he he picked up all these elements that yeah. you get from the Alchemist, you get from uh, MF Doom, you get from West Side Gun, and he's still able to put it into this this like mainstream. 
Right. And his pen follows that. His samples follow that. I and I like you said, I think he should be in the conversation because he's he he earned a seat at the table. He made his own house, but yeah. he earned the seat to uh, to get to have dinner mm-hmm. at the table. You know what I'm saying? He gets to have a plate at that table. And oh, then, yeah. bro, he can eat whatever because think about the was it the single that came out like la- late last year with him, Twenty One Savage, and Pharrell. Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah, such yeah, a yeah. Oh my know? god, yeah. that song yeah. went hard. Fire, oh, like, you know what I'm saying? So it was like him and Twenty One, of course. Like they're up there and like. If you make yeah. songs that people are going to talk about, it, you're in the game. You're fire. It's not even about if you make a song where it's a cultural, like it's a cultural moment in hip hop. You really are on the top echelon of rap well, right now. Well, I mean, at the same time, is that that's a broad statement because you not can say, really. Oh, we talking about a TikTok trend that everybody's. But talking that's not about. songs that are upper echelon in rap. You know what I'm saying? Because TikTok does not determine, and we fuck with TikTok too. Yeah, shout out to China because you know, <laughs> hey, son the bag. Yeah. Better not ban that shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, we want y'all to clip this shit and put it on TikTok, by you the way. Matter of fact, the people out there, yeah. we want the people out there to do that. But we fuck with TikTok, but I get what you're saying. But it's like, what I'm trying to say is he's powerful. And what she was saying, too, is like, all right, look, he's still holding true to the essence of hip hop, mm-hmm. which yeah, is really essence, hard, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is really hard to make commercial mm-hmm. these days. Mm-hmm. It's really hard. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Tyler is just a rat. Like, he's a like. I think of it as a sport, like mm-hmm. a sport. He's a... He's a he's a he's a wordsmith. He's a he's a sparer. Mm-hmm. Whatever you want to fucking call it, he killing that shit. Is my chair creaking too loud? It don't matter. We gonna keep this shit in the thing too. I'm yeah. creaking because I got ADHD. Well, because you're preaching and right don't, now. Don't don't y'all be hating on my mental health over right, here because right, right. I'll be fidgeting. Mental health awareness. And there we go. Every right, month, we gonna not get just into, one month. Every month. month. We, we gonna get into everybody. that every day, every single. Hour. We gonna yeah. get into that later. But anyways. Mental health matters, guys. Yeah, yeah. Amen. ADHD. Amen. Shout out to everybody who got ADHD out there. Right. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar who had a song called ADHD. Huh? All right, let's switch chairs real quick. Yeah. Zebra, <laughs> is he said, let me just <laughs> go over. T- talk more. Talk more real quick. Well, because I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like with that sentiment that he just said, like anybody, like whoever feels like they're um, they're alone with their mental health, you're not alone. We with you and we love you. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody crazy in their hey. own way. Yeah. Segway. Segway. Um, the world wouldn't be fun. Amen. <laughs> when you guys amen. go out, and we're gonna get back into these rap topics, we're mm-hmm. all over the place. This is Rockwell. This mm-hmm. is um. Tasty Tuesdays, well, because the tastemakers out here, Shout how many taste tastemakers is there? Come on, it's oh, so it's nice to whole, meet another it's tastemaker. It's a whole crew, but we're crazy. We need tastemakers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Am I in the shot? We're going to keep this in there. I love it like this. We love it raw, right? Yeah, because. Go over, mm-hmm. he, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's going to say Gover likes it raw. That's <laughs> cap. <laughs> I use condoms. That's a pause, too. That's a pause. <laughs> the time. Mental health, mental health, safety, as well as safe sex. Mental health, yeah. Safe sex. Okay, kids. So, <laughs> all right, let me, let, all right, we're going to get back to the topic. And I want to stay on Tyler a little bit longer. I know we got we got a shitload of topics to talk about. It was a busy week in life, yeah. right? Yeah. We're going to get to the mental health, but Tyler be dealing with mental health too. But mm-hmm. we're going to get, tie all this shit back, in to get, uh, back into each other. Right. All right, let me stay on Tyler real quick, all right? When he be rapping, right, he don't use no auto-tune. And I love auto-tune. Let, let's not get that out twisted. Mm-hmm. But he rap rap. And r- rap rap should be its own category. Spotify, holla at me. I think rap rap should be a category on Spotify. Like, because it's rap, it's, it's rapidly rap. Rapidly rap is kind of condescending. You know what I'm saying? Because like, some people don't mm-hmm. like rapidly rap. But don't you think Tyler, all right, I, this is the last thing we're going to talk about, Tyler. We, we love you, Tyler. So, definitely check out the documentary. Yes, it goes, oh, yeah, we let, definitely, let, yeah, I'm gonna let, check it out. I tonight. want you to uh, delve into that too. So, I wanted to just say he raps. So, oh, yeah, yeah, go into the documentary because I did not get a chance to see that. I'll be busy meditating. It, it's, it's a whole, it's a series. So, he's the first episode. Uh, me and Mike are gonna watch the, the next ones when we get the chance. Yeah. We just thought his was gonna be important because he had just dropped the deluxe. Um, and the whole seat at the table thing line I just took, I took it from the movie actually, or the, the episode, because he talks about that. Um, Pharrell's in it, because oh, Pharrell was basically like behind the scenes trying to help him make his, create a sound. Mm. Um, like that's how he came out with Flower Boy and everything. And then it talks about, it goes back into Yonkers. Um, it talks about, um, vulnerability, especially in black men. Mm-hmm. It talks about, um, how... You know, hey, hip hop was this masculine thing, and it had to be had to follow this this um this outline that you have to be masculine. You can't show emotion. And here comes Tyler. You know, little kid, skater clothes. Yeah. You know, with the cap on and everything, and he starts just rapping, doing his thing. Of course, he gets you know popular based off all the wild shit he's doing with all future. Mm-hmm. You know that crazy 
Yonkers video, everyone's kind of like oh, that has yeah. never been Love displayed. That, right, that man right. ate a cockroach and then yeah. hung himself. Like, yeah. you know, at the time it was so it was controversial because yeah. it was like, what the fuck is right. this guy saying? Right. You know, and then he goes and talks about how he himself realized that those escapades were overshadowing his actual like gift as a rapper Mm -hmm. you know a kid from hawthorne that you know dressed differently he wasn't this um toxic masculinity representation of what hip-hop is supposed to be he was just like this guy that liked to hang out with his friends do crazy shit Mm -hmm. and rap and you know he was one of the growing up you know i was around his same his age i was in high school when he was coming out Mm -hmm. and it was like you know Seeing him how he's become now is just like it's so beautiful to see. Mm-hmm. And then the documentary goes into how you know he focused on Flower Boy to really show his craft and perfect it and his sound. And people started noticing him. Mm-hmm. Started, he started you know talking radio. He he was he finally he was finally getting radio plays, mm-hmm. which you know to him was a big thing because as an LA kid, you're raised on Power 106. That's yeah. mm-hmm. that's our thing. Yeah. So Power 106, mm-hmm, yep. Love. So he he goes from that and then it goes into Igor. It goes into briefly his feud with DJ Khaled. When DJ Khaled was like, you know, like, oh yeah, his music doesn't get played. I make great music, and then he just got yeah. swept by Tyler Creator, and then it goes into Igor, especially now as Call Me, um, Call Me When You Get Lost. And it's just a a beautiful portrayal of like hip hop and what hip hop is. Like hip hop can be. It doesn't necessarily have to be this gangster rap that everyone knows it knows it for. But take it back to the 80s, how when it started, it was this fun thing. Hip-hop was for everyone. Yeah. In the so park. Think, yeah. yeah. And he still got gangster bars, too. Exactly. He, he, he and Tyler Crater um, brings that. He sober, Like you said earlier, he brings that essence. And you see it in the video. Again, um, it's, 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 a, it's a fresh breath there when it comes to this image of hip-hop and changing that, creating your own lane, making it okay for kids to feel weird and be weird and embrace it, mm-hmm. you know, especially for people of color because, you know, mm-hmm. we're supposed to hold a sense of, like, oh, we can't show emotion, especially black men. They right. cannot show emotion. We're definitely boxed yeah. in. We boxed in. Like exactly, and it's like, and if you show emotion, like, oh, you're weird. Mm-hmm. Oh, something's or wrong with soft. you. you're soft. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. soft, and it's like, no, like, you are allowed to these emotions. You are allowed to, like, make your lane and build it, mm-hmm. you know? And Tyler Creator does that perfectly. I think the, the 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 episode caught it so well. I recommend it to see to see it. Um, you just I I've seen I've seen Tyler live, and he he's, he's just a a, a good soul. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I, uh, by wow. the way, I'm gonna let you uh, expand on that. Go oh, over. hold on. First off, can we just say the way you broke it down? Yeah, homie. you broke that shit down, Ellie. Yeah, Swaggy, but, um, because man, we cannot be boxed in. Like we could be so many different things. Like what is that term? Uh, monolith, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like come on, like we're so many different. We're not just like one thing or two things. Especially when yeah. you say like earlier when you were saying like uh, rapid rap, or it's like rap is an art form. So yeah. art doesn't really have like Categories. lines or boundaries, or you can't. You know what I'm saying? Because what is really rap at the end of the day? If a kid gets on a, a track and goes goo goo ga ga on a beat and it's fire, you're like, it okay, fire. that's rap. Like the and baby was rapping. It does make and it makes a, it makes a social <laughs> comment on as to why yeah. they rather depict hip hop in this sense and what that does. To that, what that does to um, certain groups and what that does to everyone, how people are perceived. Exactly. Because mm. look how everything is like society the way it is now. Because I feel like everything is contaminated with what we're listening to and everything. You know what I'm saying? Because everything is shooting up, bang, bang, bang. But again, it's got to be that. Yeah. With that, I love that shit too. You know, you love that oh, shit. Oh, bro, too. that's all I, I want. Shoot up, raised bang, on bang, it. But at the I, same I, time, yeah. it's like, bro, we're more than that. Yeah. yeah you feel yeah, me? Yeah. We're more than shoot what? We had yeah. to cook out dinner every Saturday. <laughs> you know what would be dope? If people perceive the shoot em up bang bang shit like how they perceive Tyler shit, you know, because Tyler, you could tell he's telling a story, but for some reason, the perception with rappers who like Dark or whoever, 50 back in the day, it sounds like, oh, that's, oh, is this their real life? You know, it really is well, a but movie. But at the same time, it's like, if you really dig deep on it, we're talking about. Uh, Tyler the Creator, how many years in? Twelve years. Ten years. Ten, twelve out of, years. Out of all the yeah, like, out of all yeah. the rappers almost. that's come up, he's still the one that's yeah. still, you know, like and he came you know? up with like Drake. Yeah, he came around with everybody yeah. Yeah. still going, going strong. Yeah. So you can't really say like, oh, for for as far as like perception, a lot of a lot of people like fuck with Tyler, like. Mm-hmm. Every, you know of what I'm course. saying? A lot of people. It's only like uh, a certain section, like they try to like um, glamorize or glorify. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that just becomes. The yeah. main but what's the, the difference main, between you know? glamorizing, glorifying, or telling a story? Like, let me ask you that. Oh, uh, the the difference yeah. is between okay, 
um, down the street, let's say. Because again, let me before yeah. you finish, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. But I don't want to make it get twisted right here because I'm all about rap in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about, you know, I'm like, yo, speak. I don't care if you say fuck, kill, shit, because we know Tyler said shit. I love that shit, bro. I went to a rave of his when I was mad young. Right. All right, continue. Con uh, but you said the difference between glamorize and glorify. Yes, because okay. I was, yeah. Okay, but down the street, uh, let's say somebody gets ran over by a car. Uh -huh. Boom. Okay. And everybody's like, whoa, like this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And at the same time, it like it like goes away. Let's say next day it's like two black dudes and like something happens, like where one of them gets ran over. And let's just say it's the same exact thing. It's like an accident. It's glorified in the news, like, oh my God, like, did you see what happened? Like it was an accident, but I swear it had to be something crazy that came along with it. When at the same time it's like, okay, yeah, I grew up in the streets and I, mm -hmm. I lived that life and I, I could rap about sit about I could rap and sing about like shooting and bang, 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 bang. But at the same time, it's like, why is it more glorified than if I if I make a love song? Mm -hmm. Why can you make a movie about like why does Arnold Schwarzenegger get to make a movie of Terminator shooting people? You know what I'm saying? And what's the difference? It's like, you know what I'm saying? And I know everybody's been complaining violence. about it. Violence is like yeah, but you know, violence is glorified. You know why I think it's healthy? I think it's really healthy to like do that because that way people don't act in out. If you look at the percentages of people in the world and the people who commit crimes due to music or mm -hmm. movies, it's mm -hmm. a small percentage. Small percentage. So small. I think a lot of people have their outlet or their creative outlet or even their mental health outlet, whatever, the violence outlet through music, bro. Sometimes I'll be listening to rap music in the morning and I'm like, oh, I already shot my ops right now. Well, I'm about to really to do it, it a, in real life. To keep it a being, like hip hop culture is the streets. It is. So it's the but present, it's, it's the street, it's yeah. the life, but everything is, is garnered from the streets. Yeah. So the streets have to fuck with you for you to be like you know what i'm saying that, you know what that, i'm saying yeah, yeah. so it's like no nah, but what i'm trying to say is i get what you're saying and that's a valid fact what i'm trying to say is why is it okay for movies to do it in rap but that, that's a whole longer conversation well, and that's different like movie it's that's not like, really different it, but at the same time it's like okay stallone can go kill everybody in yeah why that's, why that's him why telling do you this, think yeah. uh, why why do you think it's okay because tyler said i'm a fucking tricer what do you say i'm a fucking uh, walking paradox i'm a fucking, no, I'm not. I'm a fucking tricer yeah was, no um, i'm not no, no, that shit was hard too yeah. i was I, so jealous when that shit was came snapping because yeah i was like all right continue i think uh th why movies get away with it more is because again it's just um it's just everyone kind of has in their mind like oh it's a movie if they see sylvester stallone you know, shooting up, everyone's like, oh, it's a movie. He doesn't really go out and do that. But to me, what you were asking, like, what's the difference between glorify, you know, living your truth and everything? I think it's the reflection. Mm -hmm. It's um, if you're able to take, of course, like hip hop is from the streets. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, everyone that everyone that everyone that's raised in like inner cities, hip hop is a big part of us, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what we see every day. But I think um, I think. There, there is a fine line between glorifying it and being honest about it, mm -hmm. and I think to me it's always the the reflection. Yeah. Um. I just had an incident with uh with my girl where one of her family members got shot, and she was she herself was like, I don't understand why we glorify this. I don't know why mm -hmm. in music it's talking about shooting up, and if someone disrespects you, you pull out a gun. Like, why yeah. is that? You know. And so sometimes that gets too much to people. Like it yeah. gets too much, and. And again, it, there is definitely a fine line between between the two. Um, I just think you have to read on it on a reflection level. Yeah. I right. think movies is more like, oh, you're watching a movie. It goes into your head. Like you're going in watching a movie. When you're hearing music, you think about lyrics because, again, they're still yeah. telling a story. It's also how the individual reflects on it. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I heard Playboy Cardi say something, and people might hate on it, and he might they might agree with it. I personally get where he's coming from. Playboy Cardi said, I don't give a fuck. And he might have worded it really wrong. He said, I don't give a fuck if one of my fans listens to my music and kills themselves because you're crazy to be, you shouldn't have done that just because of my music. And I know people are going to hate on that. But the thing is, music should not influence you because also movies should not influence you to do negative things like that because you it's art. If you don't, some, imagine a world, imagine a world, just close your eyes, imagine a world. Right. There was no music and no movies that had violence in it. We're living in a world where it's a lifetime world, like lifetime pictures. You know how lifetime is. Shout out to lifetime. So if you want to sponsor me, we can get sponsored. <laughs> yeah, shout out um, lifetime. Right. My auntie used to watch. But imagine that world, right? Where it's just oh butterflies and cocoa crispies and uh um, s'mores and just like, you know, smiling all the time. Would you want to live in that world? Because like, for me, it's an outlet, bro. When I go to work out, right? 
And I haven't worked on it. I mean, I'm going to get back to that. Well, but keep it. But listen, I don't want to cut you off. But no, keep but it let me being. finish this. Okay. Real, let me finish this shit. Okay. Real quick. All right. Before you Rory and Maul me real quick. <laughs> all right. Shout out to Rory and Maul. But um, I'm like, why would you? like? Because sometimes we need other outlets to release that mm -hmm. thing that's built up in us. Because also, I feel like if you've experienced violence in your own personal life, mm -hmm. you know, you want to hear that shit sometimes, you know. Or... If you haven't experienced it, it, it helps you not do it because that, I'll leave it at that. I probably did not worry that. We're not trying to get canceled uh, uh, on the first episode. What I was going to say is uh, yeah. I, I swear since the beginning of the time, since 200 BC, way before there was movie films and all yeah. that, there was wars. There was there always was violence. Wars. There was always mug. You know what I'm saying? Some shit, always mm -hmm. some shit yeah. going there was on. always some shit since 500 BC. <laughs> Let's keep it a bean. And long after we're gone, it's still going to be violence. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. feel me? And it's always going to be glorified because there's such a sick appetite for it. There's, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. As much as I could sing about, oh my God, I fell in love with this woman yesterday. Motherfuckers don't want to hear that. They want to hear, oh man, I caught two bodies yeah. on Sunday. They want to hear that story. Like, how that happened? Uh, Why did that happen? How, how that? did you catch two? Da, 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 that's more what motherfuckers, oh, he killed somebody. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to like, oh, he loved somebody. Oh, you, you said something to me earlier <laughs> today. On, you said something earlier about. There's a message in everything. I also think in the violence uh, music. Yeah, bro. You yeah. said you got to say it again. The medicine. Oh, you got to put the medicine in the candy. Mm -hmm. You got to put the medicine in the candy. Tupac was doing that. Mm. As far as if you listen to a lot of his records, like back in the day, it wasn't just like him just like preaching like, oh, we got money. You know, bro, he's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The way he's singing it, the way he's saying it is like from his heart, but you you have to feel it mm -hmm. because it's not like, oh my God, this person's preaching. The way even Kendrick Lamar, shout out Kendrick Lamar. We love, I love the that, way man. Even yeah. he, the way even it's a delivery aspect of it. You got to put the medicine in candy. That's why, because bro, the young kids don't want to be preached at. You already they get preached at from your mom yeah. when you get home from school. Your dad's like, did you do your homework? Or da, 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 da. Like nobody want to be preached at all day. You, you got to put the medicine in candy. Like people- I feel like you know, Cole found that uh, spec, like that range where the- Put the medicine, medicine in the candy. The candy yeah. I think Drake do. Oh, Drake is different. He pop music, and we fuck with Drake. But he definitely love put the, he Drake. definitely put the medicine in the a little candy. Bit, oh yeah, 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 when he first started. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, he had, he had some conscious records. Yeah. Um, Room for improvement. He had a lot of conscious yeah. records, and we fuck with. Um, what I'm trying to say is like, there, there's artists. who, I think that's the key to music. If you're a rapper out there. All you young rappers out there, you got to mix the bag up a little bit. You got to mix the bag up. Put the medicine in the candy a little bit. Well, so you gotta, I mean, it's you not gotta, even like mix the bag up. It's like purpose. The purpose but, behind mm -hmm. this. Like, the, what is your purpose behind? Like, bro, no matter what you can say about like, oh, this, bro, Lil Dirk got a purpose. Of Dirk course, Yo got a purpose. Voice. Kodak Black got a purpose. Yeah. Like, all these young, bro, they all got a purpose. They're telling a story so me? we can learn from and it, it. And, and, and to be the it. ones that, that just see that and just try to like copy and emulate that never lived that life, they just try to run with it. 100%. They're studio gangsters. Studio There's gangsters. Studio gangsters. Exactly, that's, exactly. that's the problem. That's where it that's happens. That's the yeah. problem right People there. People that never even lived that life, yeah. uh, like singing about it, but you know damn well you never even. Let me ask you this real quick before we move because we Tyler, we give you a mad promo right now. You better sponsor us with some <laughs> OF shit with golf wang, whatever. We love you, Tyler. But let me ask this last question. And this might, you know, when he said, um, I kissed uh, kiss white boys since 2004, mm -hmm. but he, I haven't heard him touch on that again. And again, I'm wondering this for the people out there. I'm wondering, it don't even matter, but it do. It's just like, bro, this curiosity. Mm. So what, what do you, what do you think he meant? Like, is he, was that bait, like they like to call it, or is it like valid? Uh, for Tyler Crater, like his yeah. Section. No, actually, he touches upon it on 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 sorry, okay, not sorry. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, he talks about uh, there's a line where he says, "I'm sorry for the boys I had to hide. I'm sorry for the girls I had to lie to." Mm. Um, and I'm sorry for pe he's like for people trying to figure out something about me that it's like you don't need to you, you know you don't have, I don't want to talk. He doesn't really want to. The way he sees his sexuality is like that's his. He doesn't feel the need to comment on it or become like a like a vessel for this this movement. He's just like this is how I live my life, and um, he yeah. And sorry, not sorry. Uh, sorry, yeah. Sorry, not sorry. He talks about it. Um, he comments on it. I think it's and in the in the documentary they talk about it too. It's it's again uh, again bisexuality. Again, it it doesn't fall in that form of what a hip hop artist is supposed to look like. It's not it doesn't fall in the form of what a black man's supposed to portray himself. So the fact that he's kinda like, that's who I am and people aren't respecting you and not touching on it because he's like, this is mine and you're not gonna change that about me. 
I think that's, that's the key to confidence. Himself. That's it, the way he carries himself is a key to confidence. Mm-hmm. So all you kids out there, so all you teenagers out there who are not comfortable with yourselves, the way you carry yourself is how the other people are going to portray you. If you believe in yourself, everybody else is going to believe in you. You aren't what you want. You are what you attract. So whatever you want to attract, you got to be it. You, you know? want to be weird? Be weird. That shit is be fun. Weird. That be, shit is be, fun as fun. Live it. Live it and yeah. love it. And so it's just, that's all I want to touch upon that because everybody be asking questions about that. And sometimes people don't, they talk about, oh, the bait. I don't think he's he baiting. I, I think he's being authentic. And again, if you don't want to talk about it, that's true to himself. He doesn't have to talk about it. He's being an artist. That's why a lot of rappers don't do interviews nowadays, you know, because everybody- People too into it. And yeah. It's like, nah, You're going to ask the, Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to touch upon it to explain why rappers don't do interviews because you want to talk about wild shit when you don't need to be talking about that. Moving forward, because this is a show and this is a podcast. Sorry, can I just say one more thing? Yes. Igor, Igor, he in Igor he goes. Way I know into, that, yeah, I remember so. that. Yeah. And yeah, that was a great album. It's so I think a that's great where he, he left it at. He's like, I wrote Igor. Read it how Leave you it want. Out. Boom. Frank Ocean kind of did that shit too, and I mm-hmm. love Frank Ocean. Yeah. Oh my, Frank Ocean is my favorite artist. Be at Coachella. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, oh, he is. I saw <laughs> I saw Frank Ocean at Coachella with Tyler in 2012. Mm-hmm. Tyler came out during his set. Frank Ocean had a. Frank Ocean is my favorite artist, by the way. I feel like the way he finessed the industry oh needs to be God. talked. To. I mean, but maybe he, they just, you know, what I'm saying. But he really finessed. Him. He didn't finesse this. him though, Bro. because well, how did he finesse him? Because I had an argument in 2012 about that. Because he didn't really. How did he finesse? That was 2012. Him? But how did he finesse? He finessed him he fin- in 2016. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Um, he basically so he had he had a he had a contract. And oh, that way. Okay. Yeah, thought, when he, some when people he, were saying the other shit no, that no, him coming dropped, out was finessing. Mm, he said, Oh, he he's dropped, coming out to sell an album. That's not no nah, yeah. right. when he when he dropped uh, Endless. Mm. Yeah. That's how with, basically that's he was like Def Jam. In, yeah, he, he was like, All right, they were bugging him about this album, bugging him about his album, but he knew he wasn't gonna get revenue. Yeah. So he went behind their back and he started mm-hmm. doing he started doing deals with I think Mercedes. Mm-hmm. Um he started doing deals with Mercedes. Uh he started working on his own thing. He used yeah. his studio time to create blonde. I right. love blonde. And, you know, that and was then, genius. And then oh, when Apple. he had I remember to, Endless had the black and white thing, yeah, right? Yeah. And so then when he dropped Endless, he's like, All right, this is my album. He just did it here as a go. visual Got album. He's like, Here you go. It counted. You hear that artist out there? It counted. That was that was it. That was how he he like you know that's how he was like all right here's your here's your album you want it so much now i'm on my side gig i'm gonna just, i'm gonna i'm gonna release this album blonde on my own shit boom mm-hmm. it blew the fuck up mm-hmm. and the then he had shit. all and then and he made, had made a deal with apple music all right yeah. if i release it on your platform you get, you know and if you get this many streams you gotta pay me mm-hmm. he, he got those streams because he got that he, he has that crowd right. and then he had a deal with mercedes he got his bag there and then boom after that after that major uh major label companies started putting their hands in every pot when it comes to a, an artist's business and how and how they market themselves and the money they're taking in from other brands. And 360 started hitting crazy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because they're like, you if, you, if he could do this to us, then oh, what? Oh, bro, that, he was way ahead of the curve, mm-hmm. bro. And this is because they were going to so drop him. They were going to drop him before Channel yeah. Orange. They were going to yeah. drop him. Because he dropped album every four years. Yeah, yeah, right before Channel Orange. he was. They were going to drop him because he was becoming a ghostwriter. His stuff, they weren't marketing him. They weren't selling oh. him. So they were like, oh, we're going to drop this kid. He dropped Channel Orange, blew up. Blew and people up. were like, all right. Oh, no, and so then no, he played no, him right I'm there. Wow. You. you know, no, no. I'm a damn well, he doesn't get enough credit. Yeah, I feel like he does not get enough. He's a legend. Yeah. Frank Ocean, uh, uh, Brad Pitt did something. We can go on about Frank Ocean and Man, our, future. Shout out Brad Pitt. our future. And that, oh, uh, there's the, the <laughs> I can keep going, but the Tyler Creator, one of the videos reminded me of Oldie, and I love Oldie, but let's move on. Let's move on real quick. Let's talk about the uh, WNCA uh, championship game and <laughs> what's going on with that. Uh, oh, wait, before we get on that, before. Because I just had to say something. Say it. Uh, do you think this is the toughest era for kids to grow up in? Uh, yeah. Boom. If I had a boom effect right now, bars. Yes. Yeah. Because I feel like the peer pressure is at an all-time high. It's anxiety all over the fact because you get you get instant news right away. Yeah. It's like... It's dopamine rush. It's too up, much dopamine. It, we didn't picture this. We're like, damn, we didn't... Yeah, uh, us millennials, we growing up, I was like, we didn't picture it to be like this. I can only right. imagine for the for the younger kids. It's like, you, holy shit. Yeah. yeah. I have a little sister and I'm like, dude, why, why is your maturity at this level? I'm like, because they had something just making them grow up every fucking day. Yeah. Because they had news just... Boom. Out, everything, or, or, uh, everything. It's become this this like fast train of just news and mm-hmm. information that gets fed, and it's like, oh shit! If it's not one 
one thing, it's another thing. If it's not that, it's it's the other. People don't like, understand that yeah. affects art in positive and negative ways. Because oh, rappers back in the day, they had a pen and a pad. Yeah. You heard of a pen and a pad, mm-hmm. right? Ain't no iPhone. Because when you're on the iPhone, you're going to go onto YouTube. You're going to go onto Instagram. You're going to go onto Twitter. Mm-hmm. So that fucks up the focus. We're talking about flow state, right? Mm-hmm. Flow state. For all you people out there, flow state is basically when you lose track of time. When you're working mm-hmm. on an art and you're not considering, you're in the present moment. You're not considering what's going mm-hmm. on outside. You're not considering the future you're not considering the past so with all the technology it's fucking up flow state which helps uh, which affects you not being in the present mm. so kids and artists out there i understand why it's affect like Nas didn't have to deal with the iphone mm-hmm. oh shit trump just did this mm-hmm. which we're gonna get into later mm-hmm. segue but um mm-hmm. oh this just happened like you know you don't gotta deal with that what do you gotta say uh i feel like like even uh, even goes to like art back in the day like individuality was like number one Mm-hmm. Like, like I heard, I think it was like Buster Rhymes. I was saying, I seen it in like an old documentary. Like, you couldn't come around unless you had your own sound, you had your own flow. Like, you were bringing something new to the table. Preach. So I feel like as technology has evolved, and now these kids are like seeing all TikTok, da, 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 all these things. Like, oh, this is the way to blow up. Or this is the way I got to be a certain image. I got to be this I gotta for rap me like to this. even be considered or to even, you know, what I'm saying. So I feel like indiv- individuality is kind of like it's, lost its way. It's so I feel dying. like kids are like so. You know how kids is. We are, we're fragile. Like kids are like fragile. So you're it's just like trying to find pressure. identity. You're trying to find like... identity at the same time. You're trying to fit in with your best friend. You're trying to like. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like I feel like it's so much uh, harder at the same time for the kids. Is because like who can I be and how can I be it? You All know right. what I'm saying? All right, I, I agree with you. Let's move into this one. Um, with the W. Uh, I don't even know how to say. It. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. All right, so they talking about the you can't see me thing for all you people. This this, right. this movement. Who started it though? John Cena. Tony Yayo. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Tony G Unit. Right. Well, and that's a problem too in the world. Sorry, I'm a millennial. No, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah, no, but it is what it is because Yayo did start that and he'd been real humble about that. I actually think John Cena talked to him about that and gave him credit for. Oh yeah, I think yeah, Cena's yeah. been giving him credit I for the like they had some papers. I like John Cena. Yeah. John, I Cena John Cena. Yeah. Yeah. John Cena grew up with hip hop. Yeah, yeah. He got Cena with two black girls. Yeah, yeah. He. He authentic dude. He's an authentic Latino person. Mommy. And a Latino. I seen him with love. Word. Oh yeah, she was a wrestler, I think too. Yeah, right? she yeah. was. Um, but um, so the, was what's her name? Um, I don't even know their names right now. Uh, Y'all can Angel enlighten Reese, me because I'm not gonna Reese act like one of you yeah. new people Angel in here. Because uh, a lot Kevin of people Clark. be acting like, oh, I've been keeping up watching women's basketball. Nah, you just and it's the sad part that we were watching it because of the drama that needs to be evaporated. But that's too. how it happens. I'm yeah, like, that's really anything, how it is. Anything, that's how it is. The yeah. medicine with the what? Medicine with the candy. candy. There you go. People that, out that, there. That's the the title of the episode. Medicine with the candy. Medicine with the candy. It's thematic. All right. What do you th- feel about that? Like about all that shit that happened? I mean, it's a sport. Like it's gonna happen. People are gonna brag. Caitlin Clark is the one that you know was doing the. You can't mm-hmm. see me apparently, and and um, you know she was talking her shit as someone does when they're good at their sport. They talk their shit. Right. So injuries came around, and um, during the match, she was like, she got confident too, and she started doing it. She's like, all right, like mm-hmm. I get it. It happens. Like you want to rile your opponent up. That's sportsmanship. Like you want to rile your opponent up. You you want to you know. Um, when people are getting the critique that she's getting, it's just like, all right, step back. Like you guys were playing mm-hmm, the game. Mm-hmm. You guys don't. Under, you guys again. You you just started paying attention to. You just started paying attention to um, to the game because you know it made it made headlines. But other than that, it's just like, why when Caitlin Clark was doing it, why it wasn't a, a big deal? She's like, oh yeah, she's you know she's she's so edgy and confident yeah, and competitive and, uh, and competitive. Yeah. Like yeah, and now that Angel Reese is doing it, like oh she's you know classless. Like, yeah, uh, the bar the the bar the guy that owns Barstool oh, Sports, yeah. he was like classless piece of shit. Like dude, what the fuck I are you doing? Keith Olbermann too. Yeah. Fuck Keith Olbermann. You said it right here. Like what? Like like as a grown ass man, why are you getting your business into? Mm-hmm. A woman's sports, a like, young lady, a college young lady student, competition 19, sport. 20. Like, why yeah. do you think you two cent? What do you think about Jill Biden doing that? That was she was was mad. I was yeah. like, bro, if someone won, they won. Like, if they won, you why? Do, but why it. do you? What do you think the consciousness or the mind frame behind say? Oh, for the first time ever, we're gonna invite both. To, what do you? Like, what do you think is the connotation? Uh, it's, it's, so people get that gratitude. Like, oh, it's like, you know, it's like yeah. getting a, but to me, it's uh, like a participation trophy. Like, you're really giving someone a participation trophy. Yeah. What about, and, <laughs> well, bro, I, the fact that she's doing that is kind of like, bro, they say this was probably one of the most watched championship games. Like, women, like, you know, this is like mm-hmm. women's basketball, college basketball is on the map now. 
Like, you know what I'm saying? So her even doing that, you know, everything's political with these people. With Jill, you know what I'm saying? With names like this. So her even doing that is like, oh, I'm going to invite to, you're just trying to appeal yeah. to a appeal certain to, what? to a certain demographic, to a certain group of people. Because this? because at the same time, they, they see the outrage that, oh, Angel Reese, they're doing this. And LSU is mostly what? A predominantly black there you go. women's basketball. You're and appealing. Because yeah. yeah. we uh-huh. always want to appeal to what we look like. We always root yeah. for what we look oh, like. like right? You're, you're, you're yeah. appealing to the same people that were saying that were calling Caitlin, Caitlin Clark confident. Yeah. And we're, you're exactly. appealing to those people. Exactly. You know? Exactly. You're, you know? Re-election like, is coming up. So they know how to play that. What? Medicine. True, Come on, true. man. <laughs> and I think this really hurt her, though. And I oh, really yeah, hurt her. I, don't, hurt. I never yeah. fuck with them at all. Like, I don't fuck with politics at all, but I just really hate that she did that shit. I saw that shit, and it pissed me off for like, like well, an hour and a half. Because at the same like, time, bro, are you going to start inviting all the runner ups? Yeah. Again? They don't do that. So, like, so when do we do when do we, when do we start doing that? And why, mm-hmm. why do we start? Why yeah. are we starting to do this? We've never done this in the history of life. So, why now? Okay. Hey, segue real quick. Joe Biden be kissing little girls sometimes wild. I'm not either uh, uh, party, uh, but bro, what I be seeing, and it's not even doctored or edited, bro, some of this shit is wild. And I hate that politics const- uh, misconstrues or manipulates our viewers or people who are consuming entertainment into thinking, oh, this is just... Cause, bro, what he be doing? You can't. It's not nothing both, to misconstrue. Both sides are shady. It's just why both, both, both sides. sides. This is both shady. Both sides are because shady. At the same time, both they're all on sides. the same side. All yeah, the, you know what I'm saying. You got to be more in the center to have more of a, a line uh, perspective on wor- the world. And po- if you want, either side is ridiculous. You got to live your own life. Because I'll be seeing problems with both sides, bro. Yeah. You know. All right, and Joe Biden, you guys stop kissing uh, girls on the neck and like kissing them mad long. It's just weird. Whispering but some of his ear. memes are fire though. So like that weird. little that picture of him stepping out the jet <laughs> and he got his foot up, looking like he about to do a little, you know, two step. Yeah. That's kind of lit. All right, yeah. It's I mean, how they sell it. Like, they, you know, they want to sell a good president, exactly. but at the end of the day, it's like Sis, yeah. everyone got skeleton. Everyone in that White Everybody, House got skeleton yeah. the, in the closets, and that's that, just how it is. And let's like, be honest, I don't think you're getting in unless you have skeletons. In the closet. Yeah, that's a whole other conversation. No, that's Expand a whole other conversation. No, I'm not getting can, killed this first time. That's one. I want to hear more. <laughs> I want to hear more. Okay, bro. Like, dude, it's like the it's like the boys' club. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like to be a part of this thing, or even how like um, when they have like fraternities and sororities. Oh yeah, you gotta get beat in. You gotta do all types of you know. I get hate. Yeah, but you gotta get hate. Kind of like the same thing. You get beat it's into like a game. It's like trauma bonding. It's trauma bonding. Like, like you know, you're not about to fine. join this block unless you catch a body. Yeah, exactly. you know what I'm yeah. saying. It's like getting jumped yeah. into a gang. And so if you're too clean, if you're too neat, or if you're speaking too much truth, we've seen what happened to those Obama. people. Yeah. Obama, Obama, not my even though we have, but way back we've yeah, seen what happened Martin, to a lot. You got MLK. Of, yeah. you, got, <laughs> you got. We can go on a list right. down along. You know, right. so, so, we yeah. should say that for another one. Yeah, that'll be right. one. But sure. since we're on the subject, we're gonna go back to rap and hip hop. But I'm just want to. Trump indictment, real quick. Let's just touch upon it a little bit because none of us are political people, bro. But I wanted to touch upon it because it's a huge moment in pop culture at the end of the day, whether you like it or not. It's a huge moment. He just today, literally, he got. So what are you, what are your thoughts? I don't care about the facts. Again, we check the facts later. I want to know what about your initial <laughs> thoughts on what just happened. Okay. And I want you to talk about that. So after. Uh, he did he had 30, 34 counts. 34 yeah. Counts, right? 34 counts, and he's pleading not guilty to mm-hmm. all of them. Yeah. This is President Donald Trump, and there's still, uh, you know, some backdrop about collusion with the race in 2016. Obviously, bro, anybody that's that rich and that powerful, we're going to get sketchy. Yeah. We're going to get a little bit. And I feel like since him being a former president, being indicted like this so soon, I feel like more, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Years down the line, we're gonna be hearing about this 50, 60 years. Like, mm-hmm. what? There'll be documentaries All about this. this. <laughs> like, what? This is what really was going on? Because even think about now what's really just coming out about January 6th, 2021. Mm-hmm. Like, all that stuff now. Things are just now starting to be sprinkled in and there. Like, you know what I'm saying? So imagine what this is gonna, the Pandora's box is gonna be opening mm-hmm. here for, for Donald Trump himself. And at the same time, bro, I feel like this is gonna add more to his lore and to his legacy because most people are going to be like, wow, you know how, you know what I'm saying? They're going to love wild. him even more, bro. It's wild. If you think about that's it, that's what they did with Clinton love him even, they exactly. love Look at Nixon. Yeah. 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 yeah, Nixon as well. So it's like, bro, they're going to love him even more, bro. 
Trust. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, I've been to some of these rallies and to see like people really stand up in that podium and be like, this is our savior. I'm like, I can only imagine how they're feeling at home right now. Right. I'm gonna start by saying fuck politics. I used Word. to be a big like I used fuck to be politics. like, oh yeah, mm. this and that. But once I realized what the game was, I was like, ah, you know what? Right. Yeah. Y'all can kill each other. I'm chilling. I'll make my circle happy because that's yeah. all I matters at this point. Right. But um the whole thing with, with him is just like cool, it's cool that he's finally getting he's finally getting indicted, but at the same time it's like, why did it take this long? Why yeah. take right before the elections? Mm-hmm. You're trying to like, you know, trying, trying to, to push away exactly. from this image that you guys yeah. were pushing in 20, like, right. you know, you guys were pushing when he was running, you guys were pushing him as one of the best fucking people in the world, even though we knew he wasn't. Right, right, right. And so now he's getting indicted. To me, it just looks like they just left, left him for the wolves. And I'm yeah. just, uh, I feel like this is the wrong battle for them to choose. Yeah, like, there's so many other things well, you could have gotten him Because remember, was it a couple months ago, the FBI raided his house? Yeah, they're trying, trying to see yeah. what they find. You know, trying to. And again, you know. it's just like it's a bad. It's it kind of catering to what they already have a stereotypes of Democrats about. Again, I'm not in either way. This could all happen while yeah. he was in. in, in oh, hey, I'm gonna make it clear though. I'm gonna make it clear for the people out there. I'm not either way because. I believe in abortion, if that's a ridiculous thing to say. But I don't give a fuck, bro. I'm going to keep it 100, bro. Right, right. It's a Rockwell podcast. Where we at? Man, we out here at Dash, Dash Radio, right. Hollywood so Boulevard. I believe in abortion, but I also don't believe in a lot of shit that the Democrats be doing, which is real pussy to me sometimes, and we got to stop cursing. But sometimes it'd be like, oh, you trying to pick the wrong— It's like you're like, you, you throw out the first punch, and then when somebody punches you, it's just— I fucking hate all politics. Oh yeah. But I'm yeah. I don't I don't hide behind what I believe in. I believe when I say abort, I mean pro choice, right? That's what they say. And I believe in um um pro marriage, but I also don't believe in some of the shit that canceling people that Democrats be doing is corny to me. Stop can- unless they really deserve it. So what I'm trying to say, and I'm not gonna backtrack from this, is make your own choices up. You don't have to align all your choices just because one certain a political party says, oh, everything we believe in, you have to believe in. Oh, no. oh, everything we believe in, you have to believe in. No, make your own choices for your own self and whatever you believe in, vote accordingly. I don't vote. I never voted. I don't give a fuck. You can shame me into voting. I will never vote until I feel like I need to. Mm-hmm. You got it? Because they got a whole, um, what do they got? The part, what do they got? The votes, um, popular vote. They don't even make no sense mm-hmm. to me, bro. Electoral. So what, Electoral so you explain to me why I should vote in, uh, and again, I, I, I don't want to stay in politics, but, uh, I, I should, what's the point of me voting in, uh, California if it, whatever. So, you get the picture of what I'm trying to say. But make sure y'all go out and vote, though. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. I like, I like what she said, fuck politics, but power to the people. Yeah. But power what you can. People. Get the power you, you yeah, can. Power you can, to you know? the people. We all got to understand, like, it's more of us than them. I know this is the kind of crazy, we kind of tiptoe on the line, but it's more of us <laughs> than them. That's why. We just need to point. understand that concept. You we just need, need to understand I love that concept. And, and I feel like some people on January 6th realize that it's more of us than them. But we're actually oh, yeah. going to I don't stop. fuck with that shit either. Yeah, so we got to start realizing that. It was just the wrong fight. Yeah, it was the wrong fight. It was the wrong fight. But it's the wrong fight. But you got to understand that there's a reason why I Seventeen seventy six happened. Yeah, about to cancel me in the first episode. <laughs> nah, man. The thing is, like, um, you know, people are right to their opinions. I was talking to Zebra about this earlier. It's like people, there's sides to a lot of stories. There's sides yeah. to every story. The least you could do is just lend an ear yeah. and then go based off that. Doesn't go necessarily, based, exactly. but you doesn't see, necessarily, like, you know, yeah. if I'm talking to someone and they're like, oh yeah, I killed someone, I'll be like. Cool, man. Oh, yeah. You don't need to spend your time with me. Yeah. You did your, you, you, you did do your, your thing. thing. Yeah. You did your thing, and I'm gonna be over here. Like, Word. I'm That's not why gonna Gover, be like, Gover, what's up? No, no, I feel you. No, but yeah, no. But what I'm trying to say That's is, cool, man. I'm a. I'm a over here. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> it don't, yeah. For real. And I don't think I should be even feeling away. That's so crazy with, with the the climate we're in right now, just even speaking your mind or even speaking what is coming to your mind is automatically ostracized. Mm. Ain't no way I should be ostracized just for thinking of it out loud. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because w- then we're going to live in a world where people have fucking masks over their mouth literally and they can't speak nothing that they believe in. Well, well do you think that people are going to be more scared to speak up now? Yes. Yeah. Of course. And it just literally just erases room for improvement it erases mm-hmm. any space to be like all right well you know you shouldn't believe in this because point a b c okay mm-hmm. then you can retaliate yeah. and you guys go based off that mm-hmm. at the end of the day it's just like it should never come to like you know either blow it should never come to blow it it's, it's very but it's corny. like but it, it it just erases this space where people can like hey this is you know i just thought about this and then someone can re, uh, you know retaliate and be like well you know 
this this is why you shouldn't think that or this, maybe this is how you should look at it. It, it it when when you just like shut someone out for saying something be like oh hey i i believe in this or um you know why is things why is things why are things like this if you immediately shut them off you take away mm -hmm. any room for actually having a narrative actually mm -hmm. holding a conversation and at the end of the day two people one thing about conversation is you end up coming out coming out of it with things you didn't know from each other right. and then and so that's when like this whole cancel culture thing that's so stupid it's mm -hmm. just like it's, it's just like it's just a way so what's actually supposed to be having this conversation we're actually supposed to be having gets brushed under the rug because now everyone's mad and trying to yell louder than the other yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's like what does that achieve you just achieve bad blood and possibly a fight these days. Any these days, everyone's just willing to fight. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking, and I wonder why. Yo, yo, like, yo. Bro, speak on talk. it. No, speak speaking on of it. retaliation, willing to fight, bad blood. Because we got to keep it moving. <laughs> Six nine getting jumped. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god! Initial thoughts. He, he got beat in the reggaeton because the last he, yeah, the last song he was like, in. oh, he was with the kids. You know what I'm saying? Now Passing out yeah. yeah. Now, now he's, he's trying to hit the landmark. Yeah, now I'm he's like, the most bro. humble one. That's what an ass woman would do to you. A good one. Mm -hmm. We make you change your ways. You feel me? What yeah. you feel about that? You think it was deserved? You think it's gonna talk some sense to the people? You think he's gonna capitalize off it? What you think initially? Oh, uh, bro, like whatever energy you put out is always gonna, gonna come, come back. back. So of course he deserved it. You hear that, kids you hear out that there? Bro, energy the kids really gotta out. learn off this because this yeah. YouTube shit is making a lot of kids corny. Yeah. You gotta learn off his him getting his ass whooped mm -hmm. again. I'm gonna leave it at that. Nothing, want... nothing you can hide from. No money, uh -oh. no cars, no jewelry, no woman. None you can't hide from whatever energy you put out. But so, I will say that he did capital, like he did turn it into a video. So again, there's yin and yang to life. You know, there's yin and yang. There's good and bad. There's things we, you know, there's things you can learn from. You could turn it negative into a positive. I don't know if he's going to learn from it. I don't think he will learn from it. But again, continue what you were saying. I mean, yeah, you could say like he capitalized because at the end of the day, bro, how does he look at himself in the mirror? There you mm -hmm. go. What do you think? At this point, it, it's like one of those things that like, you talk your shit, you're gonna get you're gonna get your ass handed to, especially if you catch the wrong one. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like when I saw his ass get beat, I was like, okay, that's cool. Finally, he someone really finally, got his ass get beat. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like, finally, someone got to him. Yeah. And at this point, it's like you put yourself in that position. I don't, I don't feel sympathy, but I don't feel empathy either. It's just like that's what happens. You talk your shit, and people, are, you know, people yeah. are gonna be about it. Mm -hmm. People are people, gonna be about people it. People are yeah. gonna be that live that life for and, real. Yeah, yeah. and then, and that's like. That's the one thing, like, if you're going to talk your shit, you're going to mm -hmm. come across someone that is going to be able to, to, mm -hmm. to be about it, and you're going to catch that fade. That's how it goes. Should I ever be, you know, for me, I'm like, violence is, to me, there's always a line of violence. Like, you know, there's times when you, you mm -hmm. continue kicking the person while they're down, you're a bitch. Mm -hmm. But if it's like, if that person did something, disrespect you, your hood, cool, that's, that's yeah. the ethic. You, you're, you're trying to, you know, you roll yourself, you're trying to carry yourself, like, you're from mm -hmm. the streets, you got to abide by those rules. Yeah, I wish it happened in L.A. <laughs> Where was it? It was in Miami. <laughs> it was I wish Florida, it happened in Florida. Florida. Oh, right, but right, since right. now you want to come on the show, we'll welcome you over. It wasn't L.A. Fitness. It was L. If it, it happened LA. at L.A. Fitness <laughs> in L.A., it would have meant because of the Nipsey shit that he was trying to do, and I didn't like. I didn't oh, fuck with that at respectful, all, bro. bro. That just, was just, like, I don't fuck this with you. The, I don't know, like I don't know why it's become a thing. He just hasn't taken his L, and I'm like, dude, take your L. Just it's take your L. Just take your L. It's a big L. I think he probably, let's be honest, he probably is a walking ill, and he probably wakes up feeling a certain yeah. way. Yeah, but he got life. touched. He finally yeah, got touched. He finally got, yeah. yeah. Jonathan sure. Majors. Oh, wow. That's so all I'm going to say. That's whoa, a big topic. Whoa, whoa, all right. whoa. Speaking of honest stuff. Oh, Are we going to get canceled on our first episode, ladies and gentlemen? Ways. I'm not. I'm, I'm just having a conversation. <laughs> we got Zebra over here sweating having, bullets. He's he like, like stop, we cut it, cut everything. Cut it. I'm signed to the same agencies. We're just having a conversation. I want to smoke. We're just having a conversation. We're just expressing our opinions, and that should be allowed. Yeah. So, do you think that in the world in general, you know, we should be able because this cancel closure shit? Right. Unless you want to, yeah. But anyways, you think what do you think? Overreacted? I feel like people. No, no. I just feel like people say a lot of things without knowing the facts. So I don't know one way or the other what happened with that case. I have no idea. But the comments are really toxic. That's why I be deactivating off Instagram sometimes because it's too much of nonsense. Because you don't even know what happened. I'm not saying he. I. We don't know anything exactly. at this point. We have no idea yeah. at all what happened. So it's like one way or the other is too much. Too much opinion. 
But again, this is a podcast, so I want to hear y'all opinion. <laughs> if that makes, because I'm a I, fucking walking dichotomy. I'm I'm, I'm, the, I'm on the same boat as you. I don't know enough about what happened yeah. to be like, oh, I believe this. But when you get on social media, you get on on Twitter, you got I don't know how many think pieces mm-hmm. about this, this, and that, and the third. And then you kind of see how people are talking. You're like, bro, you don't. If I don't know as much as it, you don't mm-hmm. know as much either. Mm-hmm. So it's the fact that like people are just create this bias around it. It's like. I'm gonna wait till the I'm gonna wait till the details come out and mm. you know form my opinion there. Am I gonna try and fight and make a think piece on Twitter to convince people? Fuck no. Because mm. at the end of the day, it's like, all right, um, this is an actor I thoroughly enjoyed on Creed. This is an actor I thoroughly enjoyed on Lovecraft. Lovecraft. So if it if, if it is true and you know, it's gonna hurt me as a fan. But at the same time, it's gonna be like, fuck, man, sorry you did that. But you know, and I'm gonna go carry like that. I'm not gonna get on Twitter and be like, well, this this and that. Like I, at the end of the day, it's it's like. Is is between two people, two like you know, two people that this happened, and the media is gonna spin it how it wants to. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's like I just much rather wait till the details come out and be like, all right, so so I, I'm guessing this is what happened, this isn't that. I don't know John Mary's. I don't think I'm ever gonna come across him and be like, hey man, you fuck waiting, man, you. Sure. That's true, but if I do, I'm not gonna be like, hey man, fuck you. I'll just be like, all right, man. cool. Unless you did it, he's not coming on the show if you did that shit. Yeah. <laughs> No, but you had a big think piece that was New York Times. Uh, they put it, posted it. You had a strong opinion on it, Gover, uh, oh, Southeast. Okay, so, so you, I'm going to be honest. This is from my perspective. I was capping right now, but so you go with there, it. So uh, there's a perspective. There's a, um, there's a saying in our community, that, like, uh, well, Denzel Washington also said it, like, at your highest moment is when the devil uh-huh. comes for you. Yeah, he did. And I feel like Jonathan Major has been on a roll. Oh, since, since Lovecraft? Lovecraft. Yeah. The last three, four years, he's been on a meteoric rise. And so all of a sudden- He's under Marvel now. Marvel. Like... He's King the Conqueror now. He good. He in MC Universe. Like, you know what I'm saying? Creed just came out with Michael B. Jordan. A-list. Everything mm-hmm. is like- So I feel like in these moments, and I'm just speaking from like my community, my experience. These moments like this, because Jonathan Mays has been clean. I, I, I'm not from what I know. These are all alleged. So this is, you know, what I'm saying. Yeah. We're going off, like he said. We'll get the facts later. <laughs> but we've never heard about no ill, no mm-hmm. lo- nothing from Jonathan Majors about him being caught by the police. Da, 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 da. This happens the day the day that he gets arrested. It's like news everywhere mm-hmm. on Twitter, everywhere. Two days later, then they start to say, "Oh no, his," because I guess the person that was made the claim was his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. So they're saying to say, oh, she has these manic episodes. So da, 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 da. now it's like, but the first two days it was like, oh, yeah. I mean, excuse my language, another nigga. Mm. <laughs> Beat his wife, da, 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 went crazy. Like, you know, so it's just like, let's get the facts first. Exactly. But it just seems like once us people of color, when they get to a certain point of fame, of success, it just seems like rocks start to be thrown. And there's a thing, like once... Uh once something heavy or something negative hits, people don't see you as that actor no more. They do not. They don't see you preach, as they don't. They don't. Preach, they don't see preach. you as as what you're the entertainer. Yeah. They see you exactly as what people portray you as. Right. You know the stereotype, and it's like fuck, dude. Like fuck. Because at the end of the day, we don't know if OJ did it, but I know OJ has one thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to stay off the OJ topic real quick, though. Back to Jonathan Majors, though. I mean, Jay-Z, I, Jay-Z said it best, dude. Yeah. This is real talk <laughs> we are having right best. now. We, this is real talk. Bro, D- Denzel Washington told Will Smith that I day. I know. I commented that on the shade room and went day, viral. You know bro, my comment got like 100, on, 123 likes on the shade room. I said, I said, whatever Denzel Washington said to Will Smith, that's what happened. Come right on, on. But let me ask you this. Again, with this situation, I agree. Let's wait till the facts come out. Do you think it's a, the industry doing this? Like where, oh, because why is it, or is it like somebody's personality or something inside of them that's coming out that's shining a light on it because the spotlight's on them? Does it make sense? So is it like a, is it like a thing that's going on where people are just trying to get him or for, like in general, you, you, is have, it the industry or is it, uh, is it, is the spotlight shining a light on something? They, you, uh, they, they th- gotta throw dirt on your name, mm-hmm. brother. They have to, no matter, no matter what, bro. Cause you, you can't get it. It's like for us, it's like you can't get too big. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like Michael Jackson, you can't get too big because what you buy the Beatles catalog, you buy the da 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 da. You can't get too big. Mm. So wait, okay, we don't have anything on them. I'm, this is all alleged. This is all alleged. We don't have anything on them. 
but I don't know where uh, his his girlfriend is pleading that oh he beat and choked me up. Da, da, da. So obviously, if if that happened, then this must have happened before. Yeah, domestic violence is always yeah. a weird. Yeah. Those text thing. messages are weird. You know, I don't even want to touch on those yeah, text messages. Like, I don't know what's real. You know, that so shit was why wild. Now? Though. Why now? The question for me is why now after Creed dropped two. Yeah, yeah. the hype, the, hype. Bro, they, the this pinnacle. Is, this is what. Yeah. One of the biggest franchises ever, bro. Michael Day on a high right now. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. it be your own. Even Drake raps about it. Yeah. Sometimes it be your own. Yeah. Even like look at yeah. Bad Bunny. Freaking it, his mm-hmm. his his girlfriend that he wrote all these songs for, has all yeah. these songs for. Now, now she wanna sue. Now she wanna sue after he's like, you know, and it's five million each song. It's like, I get it. I get it. Maybe it's like maybe yeah. homeboy did something so bad and you're trying right. to get you're trying to get a lick, but it's like at the end of the day, it's just like this'll happen and it's like it always will happen at your prime because Again, egos, mm-hmm. egos clash, and e- having a big ego is a bad thing, and you, well, we yeah. already know because it's like exactly. you know you're gonna get you're gonna you know you're gonna see someone's success and mm-hmm. feel offended by it because for some reason a lot of people tend to do that. It's like oh they want to have a villain crabs in, in a barrel, oh, but you pulling exactly. the next person down, you right. bringing them down because you want them to be with you. Facts. That's a problem <laughs> in this whole industry exactly. in general. And people can slip up, people will slip up, but mm-hmm. it's like especially if you're big, it's like all right, well I'm gonna take this and. You know, the one point where you create it, I have one mistake. The one point I'm going to make a stand on and a definitive definitive statement on is it do seem like there tends to be bias, right? Cultural bias, we'll call it, uh, tainted lenses with certain people not getting in as much trouble as other certain mm-hmm, people. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave it at that because we had episode one, bro. We're yeah. trying to get at <laughs> least to episode eight. It's obvious to see. It's yeah, obvious yeah, yeah, yeah. to see. It's so, obvious to so, see. But again, those text messages didn't look good either. So I'm, I'm always playing. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just keeping it a buck. Yeah, we're going to wait until what? We'll wait till yeah. the facts come out. This one, we'll wait till the facts come out. You know, we're yeah. working on ourselves too. We're a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. I'm trying to learn to do like learn the facts first before I fucking make a statement. You know what I'm saying? Be- because to, to be honest, I like how you like we like made that like a broad theme because at the same time it's like how Bad Bunny and his uh is it his ex? His ex, yeah. So it was I, I wonder how long because they probably been cool for the longest and it wasn't until about a year ago she's like, I'm gonna sue him. Yeah. I'm gonna give I don't know nothing about this. I don't know if you even want to tell us about what happened with it. It's them. just a simple um I didn't even so hear about this. Basically, like uh, anyone that knows me, I'm a bad fun, but I'm a bad bunny fan, of course. Shout out um, to Bad Bunny. We love that. Shout out Bad Bunny. Come on, you know you swag, you know. Yeah. We're the little little Latinos we're, we're a little upset with him right now, but that's cool. I'm like, what's cool, you know? Um it is what it is when it comes to that. But at the end of the day, it's like you you make your bed, you better lie on it type of shit. So the thing with him is just basically um, he was in a relationship with this girl. All his fans know who it is. And when he started his career, he used uh, one of her recordings as an ad lib. Mm-hmm. as a Bad Bunny baby. He had in a couple, he had a, like, I think in his whole catalog, he had like, he had him in about like five, five, six songs. Yeah, no, eight actually, eight now. Mm-hmm. Um... And this is when he was starting. He was still a little SoundCloud rapper. He was starting. It was a little ad lib he'd throw, and you kind of knew it was going to be a Bad Bunny, John. And, mm-hmm. you know, he came in hot when that. So people kind of like, picked up on that ad lib. So then fast forward, you know, they're broken up. He's with someone else. Um, Kendall Jenner? Not, when, the, when the album came <laughs> out, he was dating this girl named Gabby. Okay. okay. That's like, Shout out to think Gabby. I think I've seen her at the yeah, court side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Gabby, oh, Rose still love you. Shout out to Gabby. Rose still got love for you, Gabby. <laughs> I don't no, know, so I don't basically, um, the album Un Verano Sinti came out last year, and in one of the songs called uh, it translates to 2016, um, that's his song about how you know him reflecting on when he blew up and everything. So right at the beginning of the song, he uses their ad lib, and uh, beginning of March, this lawsuit came out. Um, so his ex, you know, they broke up. Um, from what I know about the the lawsuit is that they like broke up in like 2017. They were in contact till like 2019, I think, or some shit like that. And then he blew up. And then right before the album was supposed to drop, they hit her up like, Hey, we're going to pay you $2,000. We could just clear it. And she's like, no, like, I think you guys need to give me more. Cause you know, he's successful now again. This is his girlfriend and I get it. Maybe there's bad blood between them. Maybe you want to get him back in some type of way. But again, this is someone that he was with for a while. This is like his high school sweetheart. And again, it's people, it'd be your own that just be like, all right. So she didn't, she didn't clear it, but they went and released the album anyways. And so then the song came out, her ad lib was there. Everyone recognized the ad lib. Everyone's like, holy shit, that's his ex. So, you know, um, and so 
flash forward to like now that Dito's coming out. Um, you know, it was a recording that was she sent him on on their on his phone years ago. He just started using it, so she's gonna she's gonna sue, um, five million for each song he was used in, and it was eight songs in total. And there you go, it's forty I'm sorry. million dollar lawsuit. And it's again, it can be, be your own. Yeah. That just you know they see you at the plight, and maybe because they're not there with you, and they exactly. it's a crab, and they want to bring you down. Exactly, they're gonna they do the yeah, and, I, yeah. and they want to get. And, and then she she trained to be a lawyer. She she went on her life, and she oh, wow. she became a lawyer. And one on one media in media is like, especially in 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 in, in, uh, in singing careers. It's like you got to clear that shit because if you don't yeah. clear that shit, they should have learned. Take yeah. away, they can, they they can learn. take away writing rights. They can take away. Mm-hmm. They can take the sample rights. They can take everything because you just got to clear that. Did you say shit. it was an ad lib though? It was just an ad lib. All right. Just, Do you guys know about bunny, the case baby. that? Do what happened with Drake's Marvin Marvin's room? Mm-mm. Oh, there was a lawsuit for yeah, that, right? Yeah, big lawsuit oh, wow. that changed ex, the game. His ex, yeah, his, his it's not even his ex. I don't think it was like a phone call. Yeah, it's a phone. Hello, are you drinking right now? I'm just saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We might get a lawsuit for even singing there right now. I don't know how this shit works. And he rapped about it too. He's like, yeah. Erica sued me and opened. Yeah. Oh, you did rap about oh, it? All right, bet. I didn't know, yeah. even know Erica that. Erica sued me and opened a store or something in Houston. Word. In views. Yep. Wow. That's wild. That's a hard bar. Yeah. Too. I didn't even know about that. That's, that's why I did not know. Yo, this. Erica sued me and opened a store. That's hard. Uh, anyways, yo, that's fire. But that's you know Drake, that, Drake stays singing to his exes, bro. Yeah, that's all gotta be one hundred percent. But that was like the first of that kind of case when that happened. Mm. It was a big lawsuit, and they're just trying to get the bag because if you really get hurt, yeah. yeah. But it's like I get it, but just be cool with them. You know, everybody put out positive energy because if you just cool with them, t- also offer more than two thousand. I, in my opinion, the label fucked up because they weren't cleared. At the end of the day, the artist kind of leaves it to the labels yeah. and they got to clear everything. Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You they be, fucked up too. You should like, work at a label. That's a good point. <laughs> I said, do you work for a label? I'm about yeah. to ask. Do you work for a label? No, no, because that's a great point. Because yeah. if you have it, give it to them. Because yeah. at least you just stop all the problems right there. Uh-huh. You know. Just Big, clear it out, man. Drake got sued for like I think like fifteen something crazy. You guys can do your Google zone. Do you know mm-hmm. how much the settlement was? Or did they have to? They, they settled, but it's uh, undisclosed. Oh yeah, they yeah. paid. She got bank. Oh, she got bank. She got bank. She's straight got bank. for life. She, she opened the store. Hello, <laughs> are you drunk right now? Yeah. That was all she did on this shit. Yeah, I'm just. I just love my friend's party and or what? something. Now she's well. She got a whole yeah. store. Yeah. And how many Chanel purses? Again, to both y'all who like, yo, Ro Rock will never do you like that. I'll never sample you on a song. Bro, if you really think about it. I love you I think that's just the way we are as humans because think about it. As soon as you start dating somebody new, who shows up? You're act- if you just seem yeah. any happy in any sense. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying, I think bro? Drake just did that shit with the Kim Kardashian. Uh, but you know what's funny? Which, what oh, you just said. So, yeah. so Kim Kardashian had to... <laughs> Clear that. Oh, that's because oh, it's through the series. Yeah, they have she to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she Hulu had to clear oh, that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But they got to get consent to... from them, though. Like. Yeah, get, yep. it can't so just be like, of, yeah. It's all. It's crazy world yeah. we live in. But it's the best day ever, right? It's the be- easily the best day. <laughs> yeah, easily well, the best but day. But we met Jeeves as soon as we walked up in here. We met one of the best people ever. Hundred percent. No, we love you. Dropping the heat. What? Yeah. You having at least it's thirty points. Gems, 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 gems on gems on gems. And Zebra, we and love Zebra, Zebra. Zebra discovered what he discovered that hat too. That my oh, no. Zebra player. got a fire hat on right now. I wish you were in front of the camera. I'm just trying to be fire. like him. You feel me? Damn. We love you, Zebra. Hey, we got like 30 more minutes or no? You could say it on the camera. We 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 transparent. Like 20, 20, more 20, all right. yeah, 20. Oh, He said 10. He said 10. Oh, 10. All, right. Oh, 10. All, right, all right, right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, into Andrew. I really want to talk about the Andrew Tate. Do you guys keep mm. up with Andrew Tate? Or oh, not. I, I like try he, not yeah. to. I mean, he's around. He I just, I, to me, it's just kind of funny. I feel yeah. you. What do you think? I just seen that he got out of jail. Was he it jail? He just got out of jail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got locked up in the end of 2023, mm-hmm. 2022. Yeah. I'm, mm-hmm. I live in the future sometimes, <laughs> but um, he got locked up at the end of 2022 over trafficking charges that are very vague, mm-hmm. and over. I think that's it. Mm-hmm. Again, we check the facts later, but. Y'all know what we're talking about right here. Mm-hmm. Andrew Tate got locked up. So there's he's very polarizing, Andrew Tate. Mm-hmm. People hate him or they love him. Sometimes those are the most impactful people, and sometimes those are the, those are the most dangerous people. Mm-hmm. And what do you guys, like, your initial reactions? I'm curious. because I'm going to tell him what the, I think, too, but I want to hear what your initial reaction to just him in general, because I know you probably didn't, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I try not to pay attention because, like, some of the shit he says sometimes, like, I get it. Some of his his opinion as a woman. I also like. I'm like, bro. Like, relax, relax. Like, there's a 
women are not that hard. To, like the way you explain how to get a woman is not that hard, dude. It's not that hard. You're, you're making it. You're building this thing. Is like, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. Um, so it's like to me, I just I think more so his fan base when I think about him. The whole alpha thing just makes me laugh. Like, oh, you have to be an alpha, and it's like, bro. Do you think that's the medicine in the? The candy. It is a medicine in the candy. It definitely sells. The reason I'm saying that, because I agree with you. I see some clips. It makes me look. This guy is ridiculous. Like, the older clips. There's some shit he says, and I'm like, oh, okay. Then he got him kind of to, like, then he's speaking him real self. It's clout chasing, too. Let's keep it a buck. It's clout chasing. You chasing clout. But some of the shit he said about when I'm like, like, you said, it doesn't take that much. Like, he said things about, oh, I want to, um... You sound uh, like a little boy that got hurt in middle school exactly. and never let it go. Like, that's what's coming off to me. And, and I'm like, I wish right. that's what it, it dil- dil- dilutes. Is that a word? Yeah, dilutes. dilutes, dilutes. Yeah. It dilutes his fucking message because he's not explaining it right. So he's saying, oh, I only date women under 25. That's because you have insecurities. And also you want to be like daddy. You know, that's just kind of corny, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just low-key corny. But he do say a lot of things that are valuable. I wish he would remove the corny shit and i don't know if he was saying like he that for discipline. shock value i'll give him that he had yeah discipline. like he was a kickboxer six times but he said some corny shit about women that i'm like bro that's even reaching too hard that's why you got canceled sometimes if you say some ridiculous shit it ain't it ain't worth it bro when you build up your brand they're gonna come for you all oh, that's for you kids out there you think you're looking up to him and i, I got a lot of respect for andrew tate for certain aspects right but i know and he came back and apologized for certain things he said but some of that shit was just wild about women. Like, and I don't fuck with that because it's like you're gonna reach that hard to get your bag. Don't mm-hmm. reach that hard to get your bag, kids out there. Don't ever demean uh a gender or a race of people. And he didn't do that, but I'm just saying, like, he said some wild shit about women. But he had some cool things to say after that that are impactful for young men out there, like. Oh, don't put all your faith in having a relationship because a lot of young men out there are putting all their energy into, oh, uh, my value is according to who my girlfriend is. Oh, I need this love from mm-hmm. don't it, it's not a gender thing. Don't rely on any human being in general to give you your value. So mm-hmm. but is that gonna go viral or is what I, Andrew mm-hmm. Tate says? So Andrew Tate is playing the money game, which what happened, right? Sometimes that leads you to harsh yeah. consequences. You know, cloud yeah. chasing. It's cloud chasing. Cloud chasing is a dangerous thing. Let me say this real quick though. So what you were saying about, okay. You get, we got to put the medicine, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I, we're not going to blah, blah, blah that, but just tell him one more time. <laughs> tell him. Medicine and the candy. There you go. <laughs> I think that's what he was doing because he said, oh, I needed to get the attention. But but then what you said is on, whatever you say these days is on record. Oh, hell We yeah. have video of everything you guys said. <laughs> so that shit could be used to take you down. I think the reason, part of the reason, I don't know if this case is legit. We don't know yet. We don't know the facts yet. Again, mm-hmm. we hold all judgment. But I think a part of it is because he said something about the Romanian government. He mm-hmm. said the Romanian government is like lackadaisical. Like, they don't really give a fuck. They're not going to touch me. I got money. If you got money, mm-hmm. they ain't going to touch me, right? So that's part of He was talking all that shit on the fucking internet. That's like when rappers go on Vlad TV. And I don't fuck with Vlad. And I'll make that clear. <laughs> unless yeah. Vlad want to come weird. on the they fucking were, show. Weird, yeah. yeah. Weird. I don't not fuck with Vlad. So Vlad, be, Vlad is the feds. So... What I'm trying to say is, so rappers do that shit. They self-incriminate on Vlad. Andrew Tate did that shit. I love, I love a lot of the shit Andrew Tate says, though. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Like, I don't think he believed that shit. And that's what when you aren't in harmony and, and congruence is a theme in this podcast too. Congruence. You know what congruence means? Please explain that. Congruence means being whole. It means being true to who you are. Mm. That means if you are against misogyny, don't be misogynistic. Mm. If you're against, um. Whatever, you're against uh, government, don't be, pro- like, it's just being congruent. Oh, but at the same time, bro, us humans, we're such a walking contradiction. Mm-hmm. There you go. say one day I'm going to stop smoking, and then the next day I'm Well, you got to be smart enough, because if you want the quick bag, you got to be smart <laughs> enough to, not, not to say nothing on the... Uh, I don't that, know. That's you gonna, know. Yeah. I it's made just, myself yeah, f- and, make promises. And, and bro, and it's okay. To, I mean, like, it's okay to, like, we all, we're always going to contradict. Just let's not shame others. Mm-hmm. I'm a Gemini, but there's same, a, there's same. a difference between <laughs> what you said. Yeah, yeah, there's a difference between contradicting and like belittling people yeah, in order to yeah, advance exactly, your agenda. Exactly. Yeah, I like Andrew Tate's uh, movement recently after 
Because when I see that other shit, it's cringe. And so it goes back to the pickup artist. We were just on a movie called The Pickup oh, Artist. Yeah. But, but, but so this pickup artist movement, bro, is really incels. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate from the incel community because <laughs> there's a huge incel community that promotes uh, school shooters and who are people who should, like who oh, don't wow. get no love, no play, no nothing. And they want to just take it out on the oh, world. Everyone is like, bro, it's not yeah. my fault you ain't got game. Like, exactly. And, exactly. and the prayers exactly. to not those suffering from school shootings, like prayers yeah. to all prayers to, you guys. to the children, like, oh my, yes. Yeah, so. But so what Andrew Tate did uh, was put out like a school, kind of like, you know how Trump had Trump, ed whatever, yeah. Trump College or whatever. Mm -hmm. Andrew Tate had like this program for guys to get girls. You don't got to do that. That's corny. Be yourself. Yeah. Honestly, being yourself this is corny too, but whatever. It's the truth. Being yourself is going to help you get a lot more girls than faking being somebody oh, else or putting down others just so you can get some play. That's corny. That's not going to last. That's going to make you be really pent up and have cum coming out of your eyes because you cannot ejaculate because you don't fuck nobody. But if cum comes out of your eyes, bro, you kind of need, you know what I'm saying? You kind of need some help if cum is coming out your yeah. eyes. But it's like, bro, then, then let's say let's say the, um, the pickup artist does get the woman. They're not satisfied with the woman they got. And it's yeah. like, bro, like, that goes what back, is yeah. it you want? That's Fresh and Fit. Fresh and Fit got and I can't even stand it. And I, I don't have no problem saying this. There's a podcast called Fresh and Fit. And the guys get make emotional clips. They're like, I'm just trying to help these young boys who are killing themselves because they can't get any girls. Nah, bro. Work on yourself. And, and, at, and at the same time, bro, a lot of these people just need to realize if you just go up and talk to them. Yeah. Person, yeah. Just go work talk. on yourself, <laughs> bro. Yo, talk so to, like, these people are teaching you. They're teaching you out there. Oh, demean women. Oh, talk down to women. They'll respect you more. They'll... So you want to, so after you demean that woman, you want to make her your wife or you want to make her your girlfriend where she has a low self-esteem where you'll never respect her to begin with. So you want to beat somebody down and not build like this just ridiculous thinking. It's just all like, it's, it's just, just corny, bro. Yeah, it's corny, corny, get, go ahead, like, go ahead, work on yourself. Go ahead, get a, a sense of humor. Right. Go ahead, read books, but not about that. Read books about spirituality that are focused on yourself. Like I said, we're going to turn this back mm -hmm. around. You don't attract what you want. Mm -hmm. You attract what you are. Exactly. So if you got low self-esteem, you're going to attract other women with low self-esteem, and you're going to keep them there for your own benefit. And there's that cycle. There's yeah. that. There's that talk you're going to end up killing people, bro. Bro, that's medicine in the candy. Medicine in the candy. I remember you said it earlier. Uh, you said disrespect never wins. Ooh, oh, I did say that. It. Yeah. I love you, Gover. Because well, I don't man. know if I did say that. He threw the alley. <laughs> Me, him, and Shaq and Kobe over here. This Shaq Kobe and Lisa Leslie. Hey, right, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, she dropped like 45 today and eight there rebounds and nine go. assists. There you go. Just walked away. Great job. All right, any topics you guys want to hit real quick before we got to go? We got five minutes. Oh, uh, man. You want to tell something to the people? Uh, you know. And we thing. love you, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we really do. We really I, am like, yeah. I am impressed by you. Yeah. Uh, we I love mean, you, Gover, too. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want to talk about quickly top five artists what's up all right Ooh. quick you go first kendrick lamar j cole uh tupac bad bunny and mf do so we're going uh, all time a little bit or right now? yeah actually let me that's a good list that's a good list keep, keep, keep it on the list yeah. 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 mac miller's also on mine yeah. like, mac miller's dope one. yeah so top five right now yeah top five okay um uh, drake future um I would have to say There's so many. There's so many. Drake Future. I, I gotta put the weekend in there because mm. Abel just gets me mm. like, mm. man. I feel like the way life is, bro, especially dealing with these white women, bro, Abel just knows. <laughs> and then I'm gonna have to go ahead and say, I'm gonna go ahead and say Kendrick. Kendrick is up there and then Cole for sure. Yeah. I think you gave like six. You guys can count. That, that. was damn near six. Okay, yeah, yeah, y'all yeah, can count, but it was yeah. All right, I'll go, I'll go Kendrick one. I go Wayne, still relevant. Wayne, see, there's so many. There's so um, many. <laughs> I'll go Lil Baby. Um, mm -hmm. I'll go, that's three so far, right? Mm -hmm. Drake is definitely still relevant. That's mm -hmm. four and 21. Oh. Can you do something for me? Hey, you know what's crazy, yeah. though? Tyler got to be up there, too. So, Tyler, bro, see, so Tyler's many. so different. Tyler's it's so different. So many. They, he's so out of the box that he... He gets left off a lot of lists, which ties it all back around. To it's just so many. Because just, like, we love just you, bro. like J Cole said, goats can coexist. Yeah. The greats can coexist. Yeah, the greats right? can coexist. Because Lil Uzi, 
You got yeah, Uzi, Uzi too. Uzi. Come on, yeah. it's so many, bro. And so, Cali Uchis. Everybody go. Oh, every, I want I everybody to go stream. SZA. I want everybody to go stream. My boy Southeast, aka Gover. He got a single coming out called Chuck Berry. It's already out. I want y'all to stream that on Apple. Video Music. coming soon. Video coming soon. You got Keep anything you want to promote? No, just you know, be love, show love. And that's all it is. I want everybody to stream Zebra's new song because that yep. shit was fire. Oh my God, bro. I heard it last night. He sent me the link. Oh, now I understand. If you were to see the hat that he has on, listen to the single. Tasty Tuesdays, baby. Bro Rockwell, Rockwell Podcast, Gover. <sighs> Southeast Airlines, y'all know what it is, man. Shout out everybody in Malawi. We just had a major flood. So I, I want to pray to all the people suffering from the storm and for all the people that were displaced. My prayers is with you and we love you and help is on the way always. You want to give them a little something at the end? Like I said earlier, you know, you got to show love, be love, everything in between, and just live a good life and send the good vibes. Yes, sir. We love you guys. Rockwell Podcast, we out. Tasty Tuesdays. Let's go. Tasty Tuesdays. Thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, we'll see you again next week, same time, same channel.